There's a very simple philosophy you can use for SmackDown. Roman equals ratings. That's it. Roman equals ratings. He's the head of the table of the Nielsen's. He's the tribal chief of viewership dominance in WWE. And you saw that this week. And it certainly doesn't hurt when you bring a Hall of Fame or a legend like Edge into the fold and you heavily involve him, layer him in throughout the course of the entire show from beginning to end. Like, I don't know how fant of an Elimination Chamber go-home show this was in the purest sense of the form. If you said, you know, this could have done more to get me excited about the pay-per-view on Sunday, I might grant you that. But if you're looking bigger picture and understanding Elimination Chamber, the grand scheme of things does not matter that much, and that you're really trying to build towards WrestleMania, uh, then this show certainly did its job there. The opening segment between Edge and Roman was absolutely fantastic. Like you could feel it from both of them. You could feel the star power. You could feel the tension. I can't imagine looking at this and then saying to yourself, oh, I would have rather had Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan because there's a bigger story there. And that's a fantasy story. I said before, you could make that story work. You could make it interesting. But again, look at Edge, look at Roman, and tell me why you would be against that. It just doesn't make any sense. How can you watch this and not get sucked in? Like they're both going back and forth, toe to toe. Like the segment was crisp. What they said made sense. You know, I love the part where Roman kind of leans in like this and then his hands behind his back. And he basically whispered something to Edge that we don't know what he said. Probably, <laughs> First, I'll fuck yo bitch. Ooh, then Paul will wear her clothes. Ow! Something like that. Probably not because our tribal chief is a faithfully married man. But I even like how they incorporated our true intercontinental champion, Sami Zayn, into this. It made sense for him to interrupt because he's talking about, hey, don't be thinking too much about WrestleMania. I'm going to point at the sign too. But you got to worry about Elimination Chamber Sunday. And what, I'm going to sit there and win that match. And then, Roman, you got to face me. Like, even that made sense. And Jay super kicking him. Like, all of it worked. The opening segment was fantastic. Fantastic. Like I said, you tied in multiple things. You did tie in Elimination Chamber on Sunday. You built in the theme for the show for the night. You're also building towards WrestleMania giving the fans more evidence of why this is the match that they want to see. Like, what can you possibly complain about? You follow that up with Apollo Crews versus Shinsuke Nakamura, and you've got Big E sitting there in the couch with the Salisbury Steak TV dinner. I don't know what the hell he was doing with that. But nonetheless, you know, talking about how he's insisting that Apollo Crews goes to the back of the line because how many opportunities do you get? How many chances do you get? And you know what? Can't necessarily disagree with him. But... I guess we were doing this all to build towards an Apollo turn, and man, did you get a turn out of him. Well, this is vicious. Angry Apollo is fun Apollo. I'm not incredibly engaged or interested in seeing this continue to be between Big E or Apollo, but damn it, Apollo needed something. And this is a chance at something. And I thought it worked. Worked harder than the freaking ambulance crew that was wheeling off Biggie in the stretcher. Like, how long does it take to go from the ring to the freaking ambulance? That's all I'm saying. But this worked. It worked pretty well. It also worked really well this week, containing your exposure of everyone to Seth Rollins. The ratings. Slayer. And when he says, burn it down, he's talking about the viewership whenever he's on camera. That grating voice, his sloppy ass look like apparently shopping at the same place Kenny Omega does. It's the Drip Drip Diarrhea Depot. That's where the fuck they're shopping at. Look like shit. And the whole thing about, oh, anybody get you my way like Shijaro, oh, nobody's getting in your way, Seth, because... Click, click, click. 
That's what thousands and thousands and thousands of fans do whenever you come on their TV. But you'll notice, he was just a bit player on this show. Ratings higher. When he was a more featured part of the show, when he came back last week, ratings lower. Seth Rollins, rating slayer. I dare you to change my mind on that one. And you get Riot Squad versus Natalia and Tamina. Uh, would we classify this match being in the $1 tier? Oh. And of course, Natalia for our whining, pissing, and moaning during the week. Oh my god, I'm, I'm not, you had to sign a dollar value to be an ass. Shut the hell up. You're wrestling in a meaningless tag match against a sloppy ass riot squad. Apparently Liv Morgan didn't believe enough in herself in this match. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, you're, you're teaming with Tamina. You're lucky you were even on the frickin' tier list. And of course, WWE on Fox, their Twitter account removed it because instead of telling people, hey, you need to learn how to handle some of the shit better and you shouldn't worry about such things. And I didn't hear you complain when the guys were getting the same treatment or any other number of athletes and any other number of sports, male and female alike. But now all of a sudden, because it's wrestling and you've realized, based off of that list, that you absolutely suck. Anyways, it do. <laughs> yeah, shut up. And why they got to treat Billy Kay so badly? But even then, like Natalia's pissing and moaning about being in the $1 tier. You're lucky we even mentioned Billy Kay, once again, in her short time, was the most interesting thing about all of this. Which brings us to kind of that one-hour main event segment. And it's Bailey's Ding Dong Hello Show. Now, I don't know about any of you. But I know somebody who does the ding-dong gimmick just a little bit better. Just saying. Just saying. And I appreciate Reginald trying to cast a wide net here. I mean, why just constrain yourself to Sasha? You get a pass at Bianca. You'll go two for one here, sir. Make yourself a sommelier sandwich. Be the meat in their buns like and fucking do whatever. And... Now I want to keep getting slick. You can make her worry about her hole for a whole entirely different reason. Although I wanted to call out that it's really courageous to do this six man, this six person tag, excuse me. And you have to get creative again with Reginald because you can't have him actually land in the offense, which is so stupid. But you really wanted to risk Sasha and Bianca in one of your potentially uh, either day one or day two main events of WrestleMania. By putting him in the ring with Nia Jax. Do we think that's a good idea? Do we think that is wise? Really? Do we think that's wise? And, and, and as far as Carmella goes, you know, you're sitting there pissing and moaning at Reginald because your wine is inferior. Well, he's tired of your white wine and he realizes the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice, so shut the fuck up. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what the play here is with Reginald. It still feels like you're trying to shoehorn Carmella into that WrestleMania match to where you can have her eat the pinfall for either uh, Bianca or Sasha. Ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, why were the Mysterios and Gable and Otis wrestling again? Oh, excuse me. Dolph Ziggler and who put him on commentary this week? Get him put a tag team on commentary for SmackDown. Do it with the Street Profits. Nobody wants to hear that freaking jobber talk and spread his suck throughout the entire damn show. Bad enough we got to watch him in the ring. Now you're going to put him on commentary where we have to verbalize the level of fucking tremendous every way. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, I, don't know, I, just, I just don't know. Like, you have... Otis squash Mysterio, but gets disqualified, but keeps squashing him. So Ray's kind of getting helped off by Dominic, which doesn't seem to really do anything for them. Meanwhile, Gable and Otis, like, what are you really doing here? Like, this felt like a gigantic waste of time, personally, if I must say so. Because it mostly was. And then we get to the main event. Uh, there was going to be a six-man tag featuring the participants in the Elimination Chamber match. Winner on Sunday gets to go on and then face Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. And you knew eventually you were just going to have to get to the point where somewhere in the match you were going to have all types of 
chaos and shenanigans and going to get one of those traditionals. Everybody's going to get in their finisher spots. So that's all you were doing was waiting to get to that and get to the climax of all of this. But Edge had to sit there as he's sitting there ringside at commentary along with Paul Heyman, which was really good, by the way, decided to stick his big old Canadian chin and schnoz into the mix and wants to start going after people and somebody in particular, namely Jey Uso. And you know what? I feel no sympathy. Roman tried to warn you earlier in the night, I believe. And then here at the end of the night, you want to disrespect Jay, which means you disrespect the Samoan family lineage, which means you disrespect the head of the table and the tribal chief, and he's going to stand up for his family, and he's going to spear your ass like you deserve. Yeah. It's good shit. It's Roman left. It's Roman right. It's Roman spearing straight through you. Which for a lot of ladies, apparently, would probably be a fantasy. And... That's certainly understandable and commendable, frankly. Um, so like I said, this show this week didn't necessarily do the absolute best job of like really getting you amped up and excited for Elimination Chamber. And let's be clear, there wasn't a lot they were going to be able to do anyways because you don't care that much. You're much more concerned about the road to WrestleMania. The Elimination Chamber is more like a roadblock, a fork in the road at this point, a, a pit stop than it is anything else. But in terms of like ramping up the interest in the match that I most want to see at WrestleMania. This show did a great job this week, and I certainly enjoyed that. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this week's show. Tell me how much you're looking forward to Edge and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Tell me how much Seth Rollins sucks the... <sighs> Rating... Is... Slayer. He's bad. He's really, really bad. But what's worse, Seth Rollins on the mic or Seth Rollins dressing himself? Talk amongst yourself in the comments. I'm out.